guys, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're gonna talk about how to take up a dress at the zipper. And I've also included an invisible zipper tutorial. Okay guys, I have packed so much stuff into this video, so just hang with me. We've got a long way to go. Lots of exciting news that I want to share with you in addition to the tutorial. So, you know, go ahead and put on the kettle and start you some hot tea and sit down and just enjoy your way right through to this video to the very end. So, of course, we are taking up a dress at the zipper. Now, why are we taking it up at the zipper instead of the side seams? Well, this dress already has very small arm size. The armholes are really small. Um, and if we took it up as much as we needed to under the arms, um, it would have really closed um, things off for the bride. And it also was actually going to be more work to do that. And the zipper that was on there was a little tired. This was a sample dress, so we decided we could put in a new zipper and take it up um, at, the, at the back seam, the center back seam where the zipper is. So that's what we did. Um, I wanted to show you this little detail, though, in this embellishment. This is so beautiful. This dress is backed with English net. And then what they did was they cut out that silk satin into like these teardrop shapes or whatever and the edges of the satin are completely unfinished so i changed the exposure there so you can see the detail hopefully the edges of the satin are completely unfinished and it's actually those the little bitty beadwork um, that was finishing that satin this is a very high quality gown um, so you know the fabric is the real deal that kind of thing and each of these beads uh, were kind of knotted off as they were sewn so it took quite a time to uh, clear the beads away but basically I'm taking the dress up about an inch on each side of the zipper at the top of the zipper and then I'm taking it up about an inch and a half on each side of the zipper at the waist um, so she's got an itty bitty little waist and uh, so it needs to be snugged up a little bit more at the waist so first I'm gonna get my handy dandy razor and I'm going to open this up. I'm speeding it up a little bit for you. And I want you to see this. This is a Hong Kong finish on the zipper. If you've never seen a Hong Kong finish before, um, you might wanna Google that later on. It's a beautiful finish. A lot of times you see it inside of um, jackets and stuff so that um, it gives jackets kind of a chair appeal they call it when you take your jacket off and it's wrong side out on the back of your chair It's like really pretty inside and look at the little pocket They made at the bottom of the zipper like how nicely finished that is um, So the reason why they put the Hong Kong finish on the edge of the zipper is because the dress is only lined up at the bodice And then when you get to the skirt um, the zipper is not sewn into a lining that all the layers of fabric are stacked together So they put a pretty little Hong Kong finish on there and that's something that you can give an option to your bride um, When you replace the zipper do you want her to take the time for you to do that finish or not? Um, this bride didn't you know care to pay for the extra time to do it And so we're not going to do it on the one we put in But as you can tell it's pretty easy you just kind of case the the edge of the zipper um, with some fabric. Now that we've about got that zipper cleared away, I want to share some exciting news with you. Yay! We hit over 5,000 subscribers and I really wanted to do a 5k giveaway. Um, I looked through, I wanted to give away a pair of 9 inch dressmaker shears and I was also hoping to give away a Janome serger. Uh, none of these people are sponsoring this video by the way. I was literally just going to buy them and give them away to one of my BST besties. Um, and then I I got into looking at the legalities of everything and it's very very difficult to legally post a giveaway on YouTube and I'm afraid of doing it wrong and I don't want to lose my channel so right now we're putting that on pause but I do want to tell you about Glory's house okay this is a place that I have used in the past to get um, trims embellishments appliques that kind of thing for my bridal work and this is exciting news guys because of your help with sharing the word and us growing in subscribership, I've been talking with the owner of Glory's house, um, and it looks like we're gonna be able to get our own coupon code um, that just us and the BST community can use. 
Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about that because I wanted you to understand that when I say, you know, hit like, hit subscribe, and share this with your friends on social media, that is so important, not just for me, but it can benefit you guys also. As this channel grows, I will be able to build more relationships with people and be able to offer you things like this, discounts and things like that for our community. So, um... Again, I'm so sad that I'm not going to be able to host a giveaway right now um, because I just, I, I just don't understand all the legalities of it and I don't want to get us in trouble. But um, my goal with hosting the giveaway, of course, was to give back to you guys and also have something that you would really want to share um, and have a lot of energy about and to increase our subscribership even more. Um, so obviously that's not going to work. So I did want to ask you guys, if you don't mind, please do hit share. Please do talk about this channel on your social media. Share it with your friends, your family. Spread the word. And as the channel gets bigger, I promise you it will get better. I'm so grateful to you guys for helping me hit 5K. All right, so back to the tutorial. Okay, so this is one major key in setting a zipper that a lot of people don't know about or don't do, but just go ahead and open that center back seam below where the zipper originally was. And when I open it, um, I open it. I usually open a center back seam at, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 inches. I don't know. It depends on how much I need to taper in. Um, but I do go ahead and open those seams nice and wide and it's going to be easier for you to get the zipper set in and get the new seam put in the back um, laying perfectly flush so that's an important little hint for you now what i'm going to have to do is i've got this um gathered silk chiffon layer that's on the top layer of the skirt and um, i'm not just going to sew the zipper right through that right i need to lift that off and nudge it over so again we're gonna have the zipper at an inch and a half uh, to the right of the seam that i'm showing here so i'm gonna open up um the seam here at the waist that on the left is the bodice on the right is a skirt in this in this video so i'm gonna open it even further than an inch and a half just so i can kind of schmooze that silk in there um, and move it over to where the zipper is sewn to something that is flat. Now, one thing you don't want to do when you have gathered fabric like this, don't stretch that gather out. Don't lose your gather. Um, I know it's got a lot of broken threads and it's not perfect, but it does help to go ahead and keep it as gathered as you can. Um, and that way when you set it in there, the, the kind of pattern of the gather just really matches the rest of the dress. So I've sewn that down um, to that flat layer, the satin layer of the skirt there at the waist. And you can see how nice and flat that's laying. Here is my zipper, and I want to tell you guys about the zipper. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sponsored by them, but I just wanted to t tell you where I get it from. I get my zippers from Zipper Stop in New York City. Um, this is a YKK, a size 5 bridal zipper. You can see it says 5cc. I'm thinking that means concealed closure, uh, but it's an invisible zipper. Um, as you'll see with the zipper, the coils um, on the outside are completely imperceptible, and then on the inside, they're huge. The zipper head is massive, and this is like the strongest, best zipper in the world, in my opinion. I love this zipper, and this is what I like to put into my wedding gowns because you can just really trust it. So what I'm doing here is I am putting the zipper in, I am aligning the top of the zipper with the top of the dress. Now I do want to talk about that because sometimes when a dress is really thick, you need to kind of nudge the zipper down a little bit. And there's a balancing act there. Um, as you nudge it down, the dress isn't going to come fully together at the top as well. You're going to be relying more on your hook and loop to hold it together, but it's going to lay flatter because you're going to have less stuff kind of stuffed into the top of your dress. Um, and then, of course, if you do your zipper too high to the top, it's really hard to press all that in there. So you're going to want to kind of hit it at just the right place for the thickness of the dress. This, I put the zipper in just a smidge high, but it turned out okay. After I did, you know, some hand sewing to it and really pressed it down, it laid fine. Um, but what I've done is I have bumped my um, 
my zipper foot when I was sewing, it was about a quarter of an inch away from the coil. So I basically just sewed the zipper in where it needs to be, and I did that on the left side. Now I'm going to zip up the zipper and I'm going to mark where the waist is. Okay, so the top of the zipper, where the stop is at the top, that's the top of the dress, and then the line is where the waist is. And that's gonna help me kind of get things lined up on the other side of the dress. Obviously, the first side that you put the zipper in on is always the easiest. The second side's a little trickier because you have to like perfectly duplicate what you did, both the resizing of the dress and where the zipper is put in. Um, now, some people, because of the drag presented by the zipper foot, um, it can kind of walk the zipper differently. Some people always sew their zipper from top down, and so they would be sewing on the right side of their machine um, for the right side of the dress. I don't like to do that. I just love to sew on the left side of the machine. So what I do is I put these marks in here, and I just really thoroughly and soundly pin the zipper and make sure that I have a few landmarks set up where I know that if I flip this dress around and sew this zipper from the bottom up um, on the right side of the dress, that it's still going to align with the left side of the dress that was sewn from the top down. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense today, after you put in a few more zippers, it will make sense. Um, and if you have any questions, please always put them in the comments down below. And also, please um, keep in mind my philosophy. The way that I do it is not necessarily the best way. It's just the best way for me, and I'm just letting you look over my shoulder to see how I sew. So if you sew this differently, that's okay. All right, so I'm sewing again about a quarter of an inch away from the coil, and you can see how thick and wide this zipper looks. And of course that would look terrible if we left it like that, but I'm not gonna leave it like that. What I'm trying to do is I'm making sure the dress is perfectly symmetrical, perfectly aligned on both sides. I don't always nail it on the first try, guys. Sometimes I have to take out a zipper a few times and get it perfectly aligned. Um, and so it's no big deal if you have to do that too. I'm gonna swap out my foot for my left zipper foot, and that's gonna allow me to get super close to the coil. So the reason why I do two passes is a couple reasons. I want the zipper nice and strong, so if one row of threads were to fail, you still have a backup. The other thing is that first row of stitches kind of is working like basting stitches, even though they weren't that far apart. Um, but it's allowing me right now, when I'm sewing, I can sew very close to the coil, and I can focus on, you know, the quality of my sewing and just sewing straight and, and nice and tight to the coil. And I don't have to focus on aligning the zipper. So it's kind of a divide and conquer thing that I do with that. Now, when I do go across that seam where the bodice meets the skirt at the waist, when I go across that, I don't push all the way up against the coil. Um, I want to give a little bit of room because the fabric is thicker there. So I'm going to sew uh, very close to the coil on the second pass that I just did. Very close to the coil. I'm going to check my work. Look at that. Ah, rats! I know you've done that before. <laughs> Always check your work, right? Because look at the back side. I'm going to have to pick that out and re-sew it. Anyways, I could have edited that out. But you see how I didn't do that? Because I'm not perfect and neither are you. So anyways, um, so I'm sewing super close to the zipper coil. The, uh, the more invisible your zipper is going to be. So here I am on the right side of the dress doing the same thing, sewing close to the coil. And I'm just checking the alignment here. All right, so I flipped the dress inside out and I have the outside of the lining, the right side, is facing the um, inside of the zipper and I've aligned the old seam and I'm sewing about a quarter of an inch away from the coil and so basically what I'm doing is I'm machine sewing my lining the lining of the bodice and I'm gonna turn it right side out and now you're gonna know exactly if you couldn't figure out from my description it's kind of hard to describe that stuff but now you'll know where I was at I was right inside of that lining sewing that lining to the inside of the zipper. And of course, 
if this skirt had a lining, you would have just gone all the way down to the bottom of the zipper and it would have been like super easy to line it. But of course it doesn't. So I'm going to have to hand sew this. All right, time for the hook and loop at the top of the dress and time to hand sew the lining down. And that's what it looks like, of course, before it's pressed. It's nice and puffy right now. All right, so check out this angle. This is, I'm sewing the center back seam below the zipper. I'm going to nudge in um, about an eighth of an inch to the left of where the zipper was sewn. And I'm going to come up about a half an inch from the bottom of where the zipper was sewn. And then here's another angle. Some people try to like tightly align the center back seam with where the zipper was sewn. It's actually going to hide the zipper and let the zipper tuck in nicely um, if you nudge it a little more to the left. So that's what I always make sure to do. It just gives a little hidey hole for that zipper to slide down into and it really lays nicely in the back. So I'm going to sew the zipper down to each side um, of the seam allowance for the center back seam. And um, I just tapered that center back seam from the, the new measurement that she has at the bum to the original um, size of the skirt. I've got this tacked down now. And you can do whatever you want with the bottom of the zipper. Some people cut it off and put actually use pliers and put a stop. Some people sew the end, whatever you wanna do. So here's that taper. And you can see just how smooth that is if you just bump out just a little bit. And this, of course, is not even pressed yet. So it's going to look really nice once it's pressed. And now it's going to be time to do the French seam that was on the, um, the silk chiffon layer. So what you're going to do is you're going to do wrong sides together and you're going to sew very closely to the edge so that you've got a raw edge facing the outside of the skirt right now. And I did not go all the way to the original seam when I was sewing. I stopped a quarter of an inch from my original seam. That'll just give it some room to flip when I do the new French seam. Now I'm on the inside of the dress. I've inverted the skirt. And I'm definitely going to lock my stitch a couple times. And I'm going to sew. Uh, this is now right sides together. And I'm hiding that raw edge, little bitty seam allowance inside of this new seam. And once we flip this right side out and press it, it's going to lay so beautifully. Uh, French seams, again, if you're not really familiar with them, I need to do a tutorial on them, but if you're not familiar with them, um, you can Google them later or something like that. Um, there, It's a beautiful, um, light little finish to your seam, much better than surging or anything. Now it's time to press it and try it on. Look at that, clean as a whistle. Well, I hope this video has helped you today. If it has, please hit like, please definitely share and hit subscribe. If you're new to our channel, check out our channel trailer coming up. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.